Hi, welcome to the Urban Outdoors with SoCal video. My name is Danny Milton, and today we're in Sedona at the Sedona Mountain Bike Festival. And today I'm gonna to be riding the Specialized Turbo Levo. What I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to go down Grand Central a couple times. This is the trail that I do almost all of my demo rides on. I have done an actual trail video for this, so you can click that link right there. And if you want to see a full rundown and drone footage of this trail, click on that link. Just going to cruise through it for the first time just to get a feel for the bike. I'm going to pedal back up because it's an e-bike. I'm going to pedal back up really quickly, do kind of like a almost full speed run down it. I know this trail pretty well. It's just a matter of how the bike feels and how confident I'm gonna be on that second run. We're heading out on Sunset Trail right now, heading out towards Adobe Jack. I'm on the Specialized Turbo Levo, extra large frame that I believe we call it an S5. Um, mullet version, got a 29er up front with a butcher tire on, 27.5 in the back. Uh, we got Fox suspension, we got a Fox 38 in the front, a Performance Elite, got a Fox X2 in the rear, we got a Grip 2 damper in the front, which is super nice, got Guide RS brakes, SRAM drivetrain, we got the X01 drivetrain on, which is pretty plush. I do like the little selector here on the left hand side, very small, and then having the display right there on the top tube is pretty sweet instead of having it you know on the handlebars or having to use a Garmin like I do on my bike so this is the little rock drop-offs I do just to check the suspension bike felt pretty stiff when I first got on it so I moved all of the high speed and low speed compressions top and bottom to the middle see yeah that's pretty good felt smoother that time I've got about a inch travel left in the front fork so I think we're gonna go with that get on trail the suspension isn't you know a hundred percent dialed in but I did work whew, I did adjust the uh, high speed and low speed compressions in the front this bike is literally brand new, so the front tire doesn't feel quite as grippy as I would like. I've had it kind of slide on me a couple of times, but that could just be, you know, this is a tire I'm not used to. Nice and solid, like, that was nice too. So the big hits are solid hits. They're not like pillow soft, kind of what I'm used to on my Giant Rain. This is more of a trail bike. My Giant Rain is a, you know, full on enduro, but probably with a little bit of suspension tuning, I could probably get this thing pretty soft. Just don't have time for that on a demo ride. All right, so now, we've got to start the climb back and so far my only gripe with the bike is the shifter for the derailleur this is the x01 shifter i mean you know it's shifting super crisp and crisp and smooth but it's only one click at a time and i'm used to a shimano xt shifter Sorry about the wind. The Shimano XT shifter is, you know, you go to shift up into your lower speed gears and you could dump three or four at a time. Now, sure, that's putting more wear on your drivetrain, but you can come around corners on blind turns and you need to shift up really quickly. This thing, you're gonna be click, 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 click. Whereas, you know, 
two two full pushes on my XT shifter and I've gone up I've shifted up six to eight gears gonna be testing how the motor feels if there's any lag I feel any lag there you know sometimes when you're going from flat to an uphill part my bike will lag for like a split second this one doesn't seem to be doing that so for most of this technical climbing other than the one real difficult turn up here I actually felt pretty good I didn't feel like I had to lean really far forward to keep the front tire down which is something I felt like I had to do with the decoy and the uh, canyon so I'm really liking the bike so far it feels really solid very well built the suspension like I said probably needs a little bit of tuning to really soften it up but other than that you know other than like the the big hits off of you know like the step downs or stuff the rest of the trail feels really good uh, the motor has plenty of power I've just been cruising in trail mode uh, when we get down we're gonna do I'm gonna do one more run on Grand Central and then the climb out there's some steeper sections in the climb out I'm gonna try the turbo in just to see how it feels but even in trail coming up here to Grand Central there's a couple of steep little sections here and there bike did great uh, didn't have any problems with the front tire lifting it's a solid bike it, it feels really good so far gonna go down Grand Central right now see if we can go a little bit faster and uh, maybe set a PR That first big hit at the top pretty well. Bike stayed nice and planted. Everything after that felt really nice and solid. There is a really good feel to this bike. When it gets rowdy, it feels nice and stable and, and tight. nice and good through that yeah very quick very nimble but nice and planted in the rowdy stuff back end I'm getting the marbles like that right through there back end feels a little loose tire pressure might just be too high oh yeah good through that yeah, very, very quick and nimble. Really liking it. Feels really light too. Might have to do a couple laps in the bike park. Okay, so I had a blast riding this Specialized Turbo Levo all around Sedona. But as far as climbing goes, this motor was really good. You know, it did better than the EP8 in my opinion. There is a lot of up and down and kind of real switchbacky sections, you know, riding through Sedona. And it, there wasn't as much lag in the Levo motor that I found that there was in the EP8. You know, when you're kind of going up and down, the motor takes a second for it to kind of figure out what it's gonna do and how much power it's gonna give you. The Specialized motor did a much better job at that, kind of staying a little bit more consistent than that EP8. It was able to power through some really tough sections. Near the end of Grand Central, way on the other end, there's a kind of rock garden-y, like up and down section that I would never been able to clean before, even on my bike. And the first time through this, you know, I did have to stop at one section, but I cleaned the first part. Then there's a little drop down, and then there's like a staircase going up. That was the first time I had ever cleared that section on any bike. So pretty stoked about that. And then there was another section behind the, the bike park that I forgot to record, but that was a really steep section as well. And it did amazing going up that part. Now this is kind of like a all mountain type of bike, you know, with 150 mil suspension. 
it's not quite the enduro type of bike that I'm used to, but going down Grand Central, you know, this bike does have a steeper head tube angle than most kind of all mountain bikes that you would say. I believe it was 64 degrees. I'll put it right here if I'm wrong. I never felt that I didn't have enough bike to get down that trail. I never felt like I was going to go over the handlebars. It was very comfortable, very solid going through, you know, going off the big drop at the beginning. And then a lot of the rock guarding sections get real chattery on some bikes. And you can kind of feel the bike frame kind of, you know, vibrating or moving or getting kind of twisted a little bit. Whereas the Specialized Levo just felt super solid. I mean, it's, you know, I kind of give the comparison of the difference between driving a Volkswagen Bug and a Ferrari down the street. They're both going to get down the street, but you're going to feel much more solid in the Ferrari. And the Levo felt like a Ferrari going down a lot of Grand Central. So I hadn't had, I haven't had a lot of luck climbing the technical trails in Sedona on mullet bikes. You know, I've done the Canyon Spectral on, I also did the YT decoy out there, and I believe one other one, I can't remember exactly off the top of my head, but this mullet version, you know, of this Levo did really well on the technical stuff as well. It was very nimble. I never felt like I had to lean too far forward or that the front tire was gonna come up off the ground, you know, when I was climbing some of those more difficult, technical, steep parts. Whereas some of the other bikes that I've ridden, you know, I had looped out of a couple of those sections where the front tires came up and I had to jump off the bike. The bike was also very nimble and quick when you had to come to like really abrupt stops or make a real hard turn. You know, there's one section where you get a lot of speed coming down the straightaway and then you have a really hard left hand turn through some chunk and you really have to get on the brakes and stay high on that line otherwise you know you might go off the edge and the levo did great there as well near the end of the trail there's a couple of little humps that you can kind of hop off of and the bike felt really good in there as well it was very light very quick and playful to get up in the air you know through some of that real fast switchbacky section the kind of flow section near the bottom of grand central it did really good as well i never felt like the bike was understeering or I had to slow down. I was just kind of laying into turns as fast as I could and, and the bike kept me going. I also took this bike down the jump line a couple of times. I wasn't really at the level that I was by the end of the weekend to go off most of the jumps, but I did take it off some of the jumps and the bike felt really good. It was, you know, very planted, wasn't oversprung or anything like that, never popped up on me, just felt really good and solid, especially on those bigger hits. It was nice and solid on those landings. So overall, I was really happy with this bike. Like I said earlier in the video, I've kind of strayed away from Specialized just because they are pretty pricey. I mean, the bike that I rode was a Levo Expert, and I believe it's either 11,000 or 13,000. I'll put the price right here on the screen. That's a lot for a bike. I mean, I could buy two of my Giant Rain E's for that. So pretty pricey bike. You know, they do have the Specialized Alloy Levo, which starts off at $5,500. Now that bike, obviously it's gonna have lower suspension, lower, you know, just spec across the board. It also has a smaller battery of 500 or it's like right around 500 watt hour battery. So but you're still getting a great motor, a great frame, and you can always upgrade parts after that, you know, to whatever you like. So I would definitely say that this Turbo Levo would be great for anybody looking for an e-bike. It's gonna be a great all-around bike. You know, you can change the suspension, you know, you can change the cups and the head tube angle to make it steeper or slacker. You can have a couple of adjustment points on the bike to make it, you know, steeper or slacker. You could turn this into a full cross-country rig or slacken out those head tubes and the flip chips and stuff like that and just make this, you know, your all-around enduro mountain bike. And I think it's going to do well in both of those cases. Also, if you guys could for me, I've been picking up some new sponsors. You can see uh, right now I've got an O'Neill helmet on, got an O'Neill jersey. I'm also wearing some Spy Optics glasses. These are the Flins. I would appreciate it if you guys would go check them out. I'll leave links to those websites down below. Also, if you guys could help me out, go over to Instagram and Twitter and follow me on both of those. Those are both UO SoCal. All of those things kind of help me get more social interactions and more sponsors. I'm gonna be coming out with a bunch of review videos, you know, like on the helmet, the glasses, and a bunch of other stuff I just got. You know, I just recently purchased a YT Izzo and I'm riding a cross-country-ish bike. 
you know, on all of the regular enduro trails that I've been doing. I've been having a great time on it, and that review is going to be coming out in the future as well. So definitely stay tuned for that. Do all that fun stuff for me, please. Smash that like button, share, comment, definitely subscribe to the channel. Once you're subscribed, make sure you click that bell notification. I have more fun riding my bike than I do editing videos. So it can be a couple, two, or maybe even three weeks in between videos. So smash that like button. You'll get notified when that new content comes out. Last but not least, click on one of the boxes in the corners. One will take you to a ride playlist, another to a favorite video, and you can click the logo in that corner, the Urban Outdoorsman SoCal logo, to subscribe. Thanks a lot.